Hello YouTube, this is Justin K. Prim from the ASMR Gem Cutter series. I wanted to do a sort of a behind the scenes editing video today. Now I haven't been making ASMR videos that long, but I have been doing audio engineering for a very long time for video, for podcasts, and going way back almost more than 10 years, recording music for bands. So doing albums, doing live stuff, mixing, mastering, everything. So when I started making ASMR videos, I went online and I was checking out, you know, how do you do the filming, but more importantly, how do you do the actual editing of the audio, you know, cleaning it up, making it sound really, really great and close and clean and clear. And I was really surprised to find that there wasn't really any sort of tutorial or, or instructional video or anything. And in even a lot of the bigger ASMR people that I saw, in their behind the scenes videos were kind of saying like, I wish I knew more about audio engineering. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm in the perfect position as an audio engineer now doing video to give a little bit of an idea about how I go through my editing process to clean up the sound and even to get the initial clean sounds, close sounds, and how I bring them up to kind of like a normal volume. So before we get too deep into the editing, let me show you my setup real quick, just so we can have an idea about my workflow and how I'm getting the sounds into the computer. So let's check that out on the other side of the curtain. So here is my studio. If you have seen any of the ASMR gem cutting videos before, this probably looks familiar to you, but uh, with a totally different lighting setup. So basically what I'm doing, I'm running two cameras. So I've got a camera over here, getting my wide shots, and then I've got this camera over here getting my close-ups with the macro lens. And then I do all of this stuff after midnight because it's quite loud where I'm at. So there's no way I can do the videos in the day. So the lighting is really dark and I can control everything easily. So that's a video, but we're here to talk about audio. So more importantly, I've got my two mics set up on very short light stands uh, just for portability and practicality. And uh, I have them set up around the machine um, in a place where I've, I've listened to the audio while the machine was running and set the mics up as close as I could while not having them too close to get splashed or, or to be in the camera view too much. So these are both Rode NT1A. I've got them running on XLR cords in, straight into my computer. So I sit here. I do my thing, I've got the cameras both rolling, I've got both of the mics recording straight into the computer, and I've got a really, really old pair of headphones that I'm listening to my audio with at the same time just to make sure that nothing happens, you know, in the audio that I'm not noticing. So both of those mics are running over via XLR into this really cheap USB box that I picked up just used on Facebook. This is a PreSonus audio box USB 96. Nothing special, basically just allowing me to get phantom power 48 volts coming into USB. So I've got my two inputs here. I can control the volume here. I can control my headphone volume here and my speaker volume here. Um, and then I can control whether I'm listening to the computer or directly to the mics. So basically just the point of this is to get clean audio. So maybe you're not running directly into the computer. Maybe you're running into like a Zoom recorder or some kind of recorder that takes your XLR in. Same thing. However you get your audio into the computer, whether it's on a SD card or directly in, doesn't really make a difference. But this is just what was easier for me since I'm in a continuous use studio. So now we have our files in the computer and we're going to go through, check it out, what does it look like, what do we do, how do we process it. So here you can see I've got my Adobe Audition screen open. Now if you've recorded your audio on an external device and brought it in, once you pull your left and right you know, two microphone tracks into Audition, it should look the same. I've recorded this directly into Audition but it's, it's the same difference. And also if you are using a different software like um, Cubase or Nuendo or Pro Tools or whatever, this should work the same. Also, uh, I, w I just want to say all this stuff can actually be done inside of Premiere if your computer can handle affecting the audio while you're also editing the video. My old computer couldn't do it 
uh, the new one, my new one can. So now I could theoretically do all this inside of Premiere, but it's easier to do it inside of Audition because of the way it uses the memory and just, you know, it's dedicated to doing audio. So it's a little easier to put it in here and then we'll see how to export it into Premiere in just a few minutes. So now you can see I've got my left and right channels. I recorded them in two different sections for this particular video and, and maybe this is something you do or maybe you might just have one long audio file, either way. So I put these in here and I pan them out. One's hard left, one's hard right. So this is to give us the optimum stereo experience. You, you know, we want the sound to be as wide and immersive as possible. So you definitely want to split those out. So now um, if I want to go through and start editing and listening very, very closely, I'm going to get out my crusty old headphones because um, even with my nice you know, professional studio monitors. For ASMR, I really like to do it in headphones because everything's so soft and sensitive and we're pretty much mixing for headphones here. We're editing for headphones, so I think it's best to listen to the mix in headphones. So let's check it out and see what we're doing here. So, so just scrubbing through, we can hear, you know, just some of the clips that are in my video, some loud spots here, some more quiet spots. And so the first thing that I always do, I want to compress the audio just a little bit. I want to bring the, the quiet parts up. I want to bring the loud parts down. And I can see that my, actually my input volume was a little bit too hot on the left channel because you can see that the audio here is clipped. The waveform is going above the actual top. This means that there's a little bit of distortion on this part. Luckily, it's an abrasive motor grinding sound that you can't really tell, but Ideally, you'd like to not have it clipped. Notice how this one, you can see the ends of the waveform are not up into the top like this one. So I know that this one is a little bit too loud, and I'm guessing that this left channel is also just going to need to come down a tiny, tiny bit to match this one. But we'll get to that in a minute. So first thing I'm going to do, so all my effects come in over here. Um, I'm going to just use all the built-in Adobe effects other than my final one, so this should be something that anyone who has Premiere can do. I want to put all my effects on the master channel because the master channel is what the left and right go through before they go out to get saved. So if we put effects on the master channel, it's going to affect the left track and the right track at the same time. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is go to compression, single band compression. And so what the compression does, it just takes the highs the highest volume down a little bit and the lowest volume up a little bit, making the entire dynamic range just a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to use um, light mastering. Now I'm not going to get into any of the settings here. doesn't matter too much for the casual user. Light mastering means it's just squeezing it a little bit. If you go into you know, some of these other more intense ones, um, it's going to make it sound distorted or it's just going to compress too much. We have, we're using an ambient sound, so we can't really have too much compression on here. But so this is just going to bring up our level a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to do is take out some of the noise. So notice in my silence, if we just listen for a second, I can hear air. I can hear a high-pitched frequency. I can hear probably what sounds like the downstairs air conditioner. I want to take out all this stuff. And it's quite simple. We're going to go to noise reduction. We're going to go to denoise. So I'll start it at zero. Hit play. So that's my untouched audio. Now as I bring up the noise reduction, notice all of that background sound went away but the higher you go the more of the other sounds go away too and we don't want to get rid of everything we just want to get rid of the annoying stuff that we're not intentionally recording so I find about three to five percent is good maybe in this case about seven eight if you go too high even up to ten twenty percent you're gonna start taking out some of the sounds, some of the softer, more subtle sounds that you meant to record. And of course, we don't want to do that. We want to keep those subtle sounds as, you know, ASMR is all about the subtle, soft quietness. So we don't want to delete all this stuff. But I think on this video, 8% should be good. And I might even take this back down later once we do our EQs. 
Next, what I want to do is go through and take out any frequencies that I don't like. So the first thing I notice right away, there's a super high frequency in there. There's also some other frequencies that I just don't like. So let's go to third plugin is going to be filter and EQ. Uh, you can use some of these other EQs, but I like the parametric EQ. It's a little bit more visual and it's just something that I'm more used to from working with music. So anytime that I start a new project, new, new audio, I immediately turn on my high pass filter. So this is cutting out super low frequencies that, that are not getting, not meant to be recorded. I usually stick this around 60 Hertz because, uh, Usually below 60 hertz is not anything that you meant to record unless you're doing super low sounds or possibly when you're touching the microphone, you might have some really low sounds. But even then, sometimes those really low frequencies kind of tend to distort in people's speakers. So you'll have to play with that. But I think starting around 60 hertz for the high pass filter is good. Now, the first thing I want to do is get rid of that high pitch frequency. I don't know if you're noticing it yet, but you will in a second. So I'm going to grab number five because I know the frequencies around here. And what I'm going to do is change my width, my Q. So the Q is how fat is this frequency that we're boosting or reducing. So I'm going to make it very thin, like a laser beam. So what I'm going to show you now is called sweeping and removing. So we're going to sweep through. We're going to put this all the way to the max. So this is boosting the frequency all the way to the max. And let's stay on the quiet part for now. And let's find right there. And then, yeah, see this is only one single frequency. I'm not sure what it is. Some electronic thing in my house that I can't find. But so all I need to do now is reduce it. Frequency's gone. Maybe you can hear the difference between on and off. Just a slightly annoying sound that I don't like. So I'm going to keep this on ultra quiet. Now I'm going to go through and basically do the same thing for the rest of the frequencies. I'm going to look for frequencies I don't like and then remove them. So let's start around here. There's almost always a frequency around 500. It's usually a boxy room sound that doesn't sound very nice. And here we can't really tell, but let's go into a place where I'm actually doing something. Yeah, right there. Don't like that resonant frequency. So I'm going to kill it. Maybe a little bit tighter. Let's check out what's over here. So grab number two. Change your width so it's a bit... Whoops, wrong one your width so it's a little bit tighter. Right there. And turn off the low one. And is there anything over here that's not very nice? So this will be up to you depending on the sound of your room, the sound of your audio, the sound of your video might want to take that one out a little bit and is there anything else I don't think so maybe right around there so just taking out a few frequencies and so we can hear um, just a subtle difference but taking out some of the un unpleasant frequencies um, if you're doing this with your voice or with other kinds of strange ASMR effects, you can really tailor the frequencies, tailor the EQ to give it a really, really pleasant sound, taking out any of the sort of annoying sounds, the harsh sounds, you know, anything that's preventing the video from being soft and beautiful. You can just tailor it, EQ it, you know, surgically remove whatever frequencies you don't like and sometimes boost frequencies. Maybe you want a little bit more bass or you want a little bit more high end or whatever it is. So now we have slightly compressed the audio. We have taken out the background noise. We have uh, taken out some of the frequencies that we don't like. The final thing that we need to do is look at our output levels and see if they're high enough. 
usually when people are recording on a camera, even if you have a very good microphone, the audio is here and it needs to be here. So in order to make the audio loud enough for everyone to be able to hear all the subtle things that we're doing without cranking up their speakers to the max, we need to turn the volume up for them. And we do this with a maximizing plugin. Um, you could do it with possibly um, a few different of the Premiere plugins like um, compression, maybe back into um, the single band compressor or maybe the dynamics processing. This one I'm actually going to go out of the Premiere plugins and use something that I bought, which is Isotope Ozone. So Ozone is a mastering suite. So this has a few different things inside of it that help us to boost the volume up um, without losing quality or getting distortion. So I'm just going to show you my settings that I use in here. It's quite simple. So when you open it up, it gives you presets. So I like to go to Balanced, CD Master. This is going to be my starting point. So CD Master gives you an equalizer that's just boosting a little bit of high end. It's giving you a compressor that I'm not going to look at at all. And it's giving us this Ultra Maximizer plugin that is boosting the volume. So now when we play, Everything's gotten a little bit louder, and we can check by bypassing. So it's a little bit louder, but not that much. And so what we can look at is these numbers down here. So this is our output levels. Zero is the maximum. If you go above zero, that's giving distortion. So we never want to go above zero. If you go above zero, two little red lights are going to come up here to tell you that you've gone over the limit. We never want to go over the limit. But we do want to go as close to the limit as possible without distorting, without crushing our audio too much. So let's see what we can do. So here's our output volume. This is one we have to keep at zero. One of the things that this maximizing suite is doing is called brick wall limiting. So brick wall limiting means there is a limiter at zero and no audio can go above there, which is what we want. We don't want any audio to go up, but we want to be able to push the audio up against that wall as much as we can. And we do that with this. So if I just raise this up, suddenly we're getting a lot more sound. So now we can see our general audio levels are between, I don't know, 15 and 6, with 9 being the peak. And let's go to some of those louder parts and see what's going on. Yeah, so notice in the loud parts, we're hitting the red here, this means we're peaking. We're actually going way over at plus 9, plus 9. But in the final actual real output, the brick wall limiter is keeping us below zero, so there's no actual distortion happening. Probably when I go into Premiere, I'm going to turn this section down because it's just too loud. It's going to be too extreme, but I'll do that manually and we'll, we'll get to that in Premiere. So you might have to play with this. Maybe you want it to be a little bit lower. Maybe it needs to be a bit higher. Um, and let's check out some of the more quiet parts. So I think generally I can keep this up all the way. Sometimes it can't go that loud or sometimes it makes the audio sound a little bit distorted. But just listen, if everything still sounds clean and clear and crisp, then you're okay. And it does sound crisp and clear to me. So I'm going to close that. So now we have compressed, we've taken out the noise, we have given it some EQ, and we've brought the total volume from low to high up so that we are now at sort of production, commercial, broadcast level, which is what we want. So now I think we're finished with this section. I'm not going to do any editing here. I do all that inside of Premiere. So I'm going to save my file. Um, I'm going to select everything. And I'm ready to export, but I, I'm, I'm, I can't go to do that yet. So now what I need to do is go into Premiere. So I'm going to make a new project. I haven't done anything yet with my video. So I'm going to start a new project. So I'm going to put it into ASMR Pavilion. And you can see I've already got three folders in there, camera one, camera two, and the audio that we were just editing. So my Premiere file will just go right in there with it. I like to keep everything organized so that I don't lose anything. And I'm going to call that one ASMR Pavilion because that's what I'm doing in this video is working on the Pavilion. So OK, that's good. So now we have our blank Premiere 
project. So I want to pull in all my media and then I'm going to bring in the audio. So let's go on to my desktop and I've got all the stuff in ASMR Pavilion, camera one, camera two. I'm just going to drag both those folders into the bin. It keeps the folders for me so I don't have to do anything else. And then with this particular project, I know camera one is at 4K, camera two is at 1080, but this is going to be a 1080 video. So I'm going to pull that one in first so that it sets up my sequence settings as a 1080 file. So I pull that one in. Then I'm just going to pull all the camera two in at once. And you see they're pretty much the same size because I recorded them all together. So I'm going to save. Now I've got all my cameras in. They're not synced up. Nothing's synced yet. If you're only doing one channel of video, if you've only got one camera, it's the same thing. You just don't have two videos, but otherwise the same. So let, now let's go back into Audition and bring up the window. And so we have all the audios ready to go. Everything's set. So we're going to go to File, Export, Export to Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm going to put that into the same folder. So that was ASMR Pavilion Audio. Save. So I want everything organized so I don't lose anything, especially when I go to back up everything. Export. I didn't touch any of the settings. It's going to automatically bring those into Adobe Premiere. And it's going to say, do you want to copy to an active sequence new audio track? New audio tracks what we want. OK. So now you see we've just brought in our Premiere audio and we've got our camera audio and two ch channels of camera video. So now what we need to do is sync everything up. So let's just, well, we'll just zoom in. And so what I've done, and I do this every time when I'm starting a new project, I create sync points. So I'm clapping and snapping. So I know that everything before that is nothing. So I'm just going to pull these two channels of audio up, delete all that stuff. I don't need that stuff. I just need to sync now. And the sync starts with the claps. So here I can see the claps there. If you can't see them, you can just make it bigger. So I'm going to move that stuff. And same here, the claps. OK, so now we're going to zoom in on the claps. And we can see I've got six claps, six claps, six claps. So what I'm going to do is just sort of, the last one looks to be the biggest one. So I'm going to zoom in and just line everything up roughly. And then I'll zoom in even more. And I want it to be perfect. So that's as far as I can zoom in. You can actually zoom in a little bit more if you right click on the timeline show audio time units and you can then actually go in a little bit more though you can't freely move everything but you can try and move it as close as possible so the video can't move to any spot because it's synced to time code so the video has to stay there but the audio is not synced so you can move the audio more freely so it's better to make the audio match up with your video that way so okay th that's that's a perfect sync there's a little bit of difference here because the cameras are a different distance from my hands, but generally the sync is good. And we can listen to it and confirm that. Yeah, everything sounds good. If it was off a little bit, it would sound maybe like this. So yeah, there's doubles. We don't want doubles. We want everything to be perfectly synced up. So. Now I know everything's synced, so I'm going to cut there so everything is synced up. And now I know where's the beginning of my video. So now everything's synced up. Um, I have a second take over here, so I'm going to have to go sync it up again, but it's the same thing. You just have to move your claps around. They're here, here, and here. Sync everything up. So now at least my beginning is, is synced. So we can go through and check out the audio. So I'm just going to play it as is. And so now what we need to make sure that we do, if we click on audio, because we're working with the audio, we want to be on audio track mixer. So if 
first things first, we want to make sure that we're in stereo. Right now we are, all of our tracks are playing, so we need to take off all of our camera audio, which is for me audio one, audio two. We don't want those tracks. And then audio three and four, which are the tracks that we brought in from Audition, we need to spread them out again because they're not playing in stereo, they're in mono. So left, right, now we're in stereo. So I'll go through, I'll edit my video, I'll make it look the way I want to, but then notice my audio is still pretty low. So I can boost it up with the track mixers and just make sure that they're the same. So this is, let's say 10 and 10, so that they're the same. But then also remember, I have an idea that maybe my left channel is a bit too loud. So I can watch these meters and see, is my left channel always louder than the right? Or is it the other way around? So let's just go through. It looks like actually my right channel, so maybe the channels are switched now. But if you think that maybe your two channels didn't record exactly the same, you can also manipulate them a little bit. This one just needs a super small adjustment up right about there. So I went down about one decibel and now it's looking pretty even. But still, we're down at 34 for most of the video, other than the really loud parts. So actually, I'm going to bring this up even more, maybe all the way. And if you need to, you can even add another maximizer. So we can put the plugins in up here. So if I feel like I need to add another instance of Ozone, the mastering plugin, I can put that on. Usually if I do it two times, if I feel like I need to do it two times, I will use the same plugin preset, but I will turn off the high pitch boost. And now we see that our audio is a bit louder. Maybe it needs to go even more. Maybe about there. And now we've synced our audio that has already been cleaned in Audition. And we have boosted it up a little bit more. If you still feel like maybe once you're looking at the video with the audio that you're, you're needing to add something, you can still go through and add maybe another EQ or whatever. Just add it before your mastering plugin. The brick wall limiter should be the last thing that you do. So... Pretty much now we're finished. We have cleaned up our audio, we have synced it with the video, and we've put everything together. It's clear, it's crisp, it's clean, it's loud but not distorted, which is exactly what we wanted it to be. When I'm finished, I like to listen to the audio in a bunch of different sources. So I'll listen to it in my headphones. I'll listen to it in my iPhone headphones because I know a lot of people are using iPhone headphones. I'm gonna listen to it on my speakers here and I think for ASMR that's good, but if you're if you're mixing something else like music or a full audio for video production, you might want to listen to it on a TV or for music, a car stereo or, or whatever, to a boombox, to, to get a bunch of different references to make sure that it sounds good in every scenario. But I think for, for ASMR, for YouTube, it's a little bit overkill. Your laptop speakers, your iPhone headphones, and your, your maybe if you have studio headphones, I think between those three you're good because that's pretty much what everyone's going to be watching with. So at that point, we're totally finished. All we need to do is export our video. Um, and so for ASMR, I don't think it's, it's any different than anything else. So to export, I'm just going to go to file, export, media. I like to just use the preset YouTube 1080 use maximum render quality. That preset already has the settings for high quality audio. 48,000 Hertz is good. Stereo, everything. You don't need to change any of the settings. It's already a very good quality. Um, and then just give it a name, tell it where it's going to export to, and you're finished. Click export, and we have now successfully shot, edited, cleaned, synced, and exported a perfect ASMR video. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope this can help you take your 
audio engineering, your audio editing production to the next level. You know, um, so many ASMR videos are really, really great, but you have to crank up the volume. Um, and for some people, if you don't have a great speaker system, it just can't hear what, what's going on. So I think for me, um, as a, as an audiophile who loves listening to audio, and it's one of the reasons why I love, you know, looking at these different kinds of ASMR videos that people are making because it's such a focus on sound. Um, hopefully having some of these tools in your sound editing toolbox can help you to, you know, really take it to the highest level. So thank you so much for watching. This is Justin K. Prim signing off from Bangkok. See you next time.